Hello. Who's out there today? Who's on Zoom? Who and how many are on Zoom? I want to know. All right. What time we got? Do we have 6.30 yet? 6.30. Let's start. Hi, Menta. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get started. I'm going to start the clock because it's going to be 50 minutes. Um, let's see what I got here. So hopefully you had a nice weather day yesterday in Seattle. It was gorgeous. Good chance to get out on a bike ride. I'm going to have to uh, calibrate my compu trainer. I got a nice seven minute warm up in. If you're just getting started and you feel a little creaky, make sure you're in a very easy gear. Just ride there for about a minute and then switch to one gear harder. And then just keep doing that. Starting that very easiest gear you'll eventually start to feel a little bit better. Hi, Marion. Good morning. I'm here, but not on Zoom. <laughs> oh, got to leave at 7. All right. Make sure uh, if you're leaving at 7, just make your last, like, say, five minutes nice and easy wherever we're at. You could go a little harder in the workout if you wanted to. Um, that'll work and just make the last five minutes easy. So uh, let's see. We did this workout before, uh, and there may be some new people joining that were that said they were going to join, so we'll see. Um, if you're new, the main set is a collection of seven minutes, and the first minute kind of determines the rest of the set. So if you're new, to cycling or getting back into cycling, make that first minute only slightly uncomfortable. For those of you who've been here or a while and doing the workouts, you can take that up to between moderately hard to hard or think about like an Olympic distance race effort, be it that, or you can even be a slightly above that. The only place we don't want to be for everybody is super hard, um, but you can go on the harder end if you've been doing these workouts. Okay, now I got to Calibrate my copy chain. One second. Okay, so uh, first minute again is you either, if you're new, you're going to just keep it slightly uncomfortable. If you've been doing these a while, you can take it up to hard. Um, so just go to a Bigger gear, harder gear, push that first minute, challenging. And then we're going to step down for a minute and 30 to the upper end of our aerobic zone, which means that for really for that minute 30, you're still going to be breathing slightly hard and you're going to be recovering because the intensity is going to be lower than the first minute. Uh, for those of you who aren't going to push that first minute, you'll recover much more quickly. And for all of us, what we're going to do is just choose an easier gear. So how hard you go depends on how many gears you'll have to switch down to get to the top of the aerobic zone. If you're just slightly uncomfortable, one gear change will do it. If you're going really hard, maybe it's two or three or four gear changes. Uh, for some people, it will mean starting going into the big chain ring for the first minute and then dropping to the smaller middle chain ring for a minute two or maybe the third time we switch so a minute 30 at the upper end of aerobic and then we're going to do two minutes at the mid aerobic which is what i like to refer to as uh it's where you find your gear of choice i was out riding yesterday and noticed that as much as it's a gear of choice it's also also really a cadence of choice so Next time you're out riding, especially when you're on a nice and flat section and you kind of forget about everything, just take a peek at your cadence. Because more than likely, when you get into that rhythm, you're going to gravitate towards a cadence of choice. And it's probably going to be in the same gear, uh, which is your gear of choice. And 
you're gonna just, that's where you're gonna feel really comfortable, right? And so, especially if your cadence of choice is like 82 or 83, then work on bumping that up. So with intention, ride with it more around 90. And if you're riding at 90, maybe try riding at 93 and see how that feels. The more time you spend doing that, whether it's here or outside, a couple of weeks will go by and next time you do like that check, you'll just be out riding and all of a sudden you'll be like, hey, my cadence is higher than it was and I feel just as good because your body will adapt to it. Okay. See, Thursday we're back. I actually wrote down Thursday's workout. Let's see what I got in store for you. So it's kind of similar on Thursday, but it's harder. We're gonna start off like a minute upper aerobic, bump up to two minutes hard, and then come back to upper aerobic. So it's gonna basically make like a four minute block of uh, what we tend to call tempo, which tempo is right above aerobic. So when you cross your aerobic zone, you start to get into this really hard work. In the middle is like this gray zone. So tempo is another word for it. Um, steady state is a kind of popular term for it right now, or some people are calling it sweet spot in the cycling world. It's basically, um, working right around say 85% of your FTP. It's an effort that you can do for quite a while, but it's you, the breathing starts to become labored. So you're not totally out of breath, but the breathing's labored. Um, but you can, you can be there for quite a while. So we'll be there for four minutes. Uh, that's on Thursday. So, all right. Okay, so if you haven't, make sure you've started selecting some harder gears. Uh, you can even get into the big chain ring maybe, and one of your easier big chain ring gears. Remember when you're in your big chain ring, and I say easy gear in the big chain ring, you're not using the two gears that are next to your spokes. So if you look down, there should be at least two gears uncovered in the big chain ring. And then if you're not already, let's lift the cadence. Let's get that cadence up to 90, whatever gear you're in. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna do two times 45 seconds with low cadence. So remember the first one is just a moderate effort. Um, we wanna get into where our cadence is like between 60 and 70, but it doesn't have to be super hard on the lungs. So it's not like a full, you know, power um, we just want to feel the pedal stroke. And then on the second one, we'll go a little bit harder. So maybe that's one gear change harder. Maybe it's uh, a little bit higher cadence. And then we'll do two times 45 seconds of high cadence. And then we'll jump into the workout. Start sweating. Marion, for you, for getting off at seven, if you want on these low cadence and high cadence, you can bring up the intensity um, if you're feeling warmed up. Uh, that way you'll get more intensity work quicker since you're gonna have to leave at seven. So like on this first one, you could maybe build through it. So kind of start off nice and easy for 10, 15 seconds and then for the rest of the 45 seconds, maybe a gear change or bring up the cadence and kind of first one really ramp it up at the end where the rest of us will be more steady effort. And then on the second one, Marion, you could really go a little bit harder. And then when we do the high cadence, you could choose a harder gear than maybe normal to bring your intensity up. Okay, we're gonna go in 30 seconds. So if you wanna grab a drink, grab a drink.
All right, make sure you're in the big chain ring. And you're gonna do, you know, you wanna get into a gear that puts a lot of resistance in the pedals. You wanna feel the entire pedal stroke. All right, we're going five, four, three, two, one, go. So change gears. Again, it's a moderate effort. If you don't have cadence and you can match your tempo to my legs, I'm at, uh, I'm at 70 right now. So feel the pedal stroke all the way through. Bring your belly button to your spine, elongate your spine, relax your elbows, relax your fingers, push your glutes back into the seat, sweep through the bottom of the pedal stroke, Maybe have a look at what gear you're in. And next time you're gonna be in the same gear and go a little higher cadence or gear harder. Okay, uh, let's recover. So you can either go to the easiest gear in the big chain ring or drop down to the small chain ring, whichever works for you. This should just, we're just spinning out our legs. So very little if any tension in the pedal stroke to keep the pedals going. And I don't care in the recovery if you're at 90, you can be below 90 cadence. It's kind of more mental and then physiological for sure when we go harder. All right, let's get back in the big chain ring. Okay, we're going in like six seconds. So think about that gear and we want to just bump up the intensity a little bit. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Here we go. So wherever you were at last time, a little bit harder. Still want to maintain that by using your gears. You want to make sure there's muscular tension on the entire pedal stroke. And this is a great time to practice bringing in your belly button, elongating your spine. I was riding up the hill out of Edmonds yesterday with some people, and I was practicing this. Because, you know, we tend to slump over when we ride hills. And as soon as I did this, I started going a little bit faster. Um, so that was really fun. So you can put this into practice very easily outside. Three, two, one, recover. So if you want, you can go to small chain ring. All right, the next time we're gonna go high cadence. So high cadence is something you could do in one of your harder gears in the uh, small chain ring. Again, in the small chain ring, one of your harder gears means that the last two gears are not going to be used because then your chain is cross chain. But your small chain ring, third gear in, is something you could do high cadence work in. You could also do it in your big chain ring in one of your easier gears. So it's up to you. I like to do it with my big chain ring, my cycle shit. There we go. Ready? two, one, go, high cadence. So you want a gear that you can allow you to get above 90. And you know you're really doing it well like when you start to bounce. And that's an opportunity to bring in your belly button, quiet your upper body, see if you can keep your cadence up towards 100. So I'm a 97 if you're matching my legs. When you start to feel that bounce, you know you're at the right spot. It's also an opportunity to work on your body mechanics. All right, recover. So either the go to an easier gear, slow down your legs, or go to the small chain ring. Okay. Last one before we start, and so you can bring up the intensity a little bit. You can either do that by one gear harder or just a higher cadence or both. Though it's harder to bring up your cadence when you get to the harder gear. I can feel, you know, just myself right now, I just wanted to slump over. 
so like at the end of that one you know i really had to zip myself up bring your your rib cage together tighten your core elongate your spine oops i missed the break point two one go high cadence so bring your cadence out if it starts to get where you're bouncing too much maybe try one gear harder see if you can maintain that cadence in the harder gear small chain ring so one thing that's a good drill and will actually help your cadence work you can do this here on a bike on a trainer you can do it outside on a flat safe section get your cadence above 90 switch to a harder gear keep it above 90 ride for like 20 30 seconds boom one gear harder keep it above 90 the more you can do that what's going to happen is is you keep your cadence above 90 in a harder gear when you go back to maybe one gear or your gear of choice your cadence all of a sudden is going to be 95 right so that's a great drill to do it's just practicing keeping at 90 in a gear harder than your normal natural gear of choice all right here we go we're going to go seven minutes first minute you're either going to do it slightly uncomfortable or you're going to go hard okay and then we're going to bump it down from there as we recover ready we're going to go three two one go so for me i'm in the big chain ring I'm gonna bring my cadence up and then slowly start switching gears to a harder gear as my intensity rises so what i'm thinking about in my mind is what kind of effort do i put out on an olympic distance course and maybe i'll be just slightly above that but it's not an all-out sprint I want it to be where I can have a hard time talking, where the concentration has to go up. Except if you're new to our cycling, keep it at a lower effort. So my legs are starting to burn a little bit. Easier for a minute and a half. So maybe it's one gear change easier. You're still working, but it's slowly, your breath's gonna slowly start coming back. Maybe it's two gear changes. Maybe it's two gear changes, and then you start to recover too much and you go one change harder. Maybe you just went one gear change and you need to do another easier one. Think about the effort. We want it to be less than that first minute, but we still want to be working while we start to recover. So we're here for another 45 seconds and then we're going to bump down to an easier gear. So for some of you, that means you're going to have to go to the small chain ring or the middle chain ring if you have three. Another tip I've been given for a while. So we're going to ride in 50 minutes today. Should nearly be getting through one bottle. So in general, one bottle an hour. All right, we're going in three seconds, two, one. Shift easier gear. You should definitely notice that your cadence kind of pops up a little bit. The effort should be a lot easier than that first minute. We're gonna be here for two minutes. So we're still working here, 
but it's more of a comfortable work, right? This is that place where you can ride and talk, but you're still putting out a little bit of exertion. Maybe you just take a big breath because you start to realize you're recovering. So this is considered our aerobic zone. Generally speaking, you want about 80%, even some say up to 90% of your total training done in this zone. And that where we just were was like the top end of it and where you start to cross over. Um, and then this is like solid middle of your aerobic zone. The next one down, we're gonna do a minute 30 at the lower end of our aerobic zone. Um, but it doesn't mean like to get that 80%, your entire workout needs to be aerobic because you know your warm up and your cool down are aerobic. So in this workout, you know, really four times a minute. So four minutes are above aerobic plus there's maybe a little bit in between as we come down from that. So let's say it's six minutes. So six minutes out of 50 is, what's that, 44 minutes is aerobic. So I don't know what the math is, divide 44 by 50. It's probably above 80%, even though we're doing some intensity work, right? We're still the majority of this workout is aerobic. All right, in five seconds, you're going to go at least one gear easier. And then this should start to feel really calm. Hopefully the breathing is coming back. So if we're out riding outside, this is where, you know, we're having a nice conversation, um, but we're still riding. We're not just, you know, in the, what I call Lala land, where a lot of times you're out riding and you just forget everything, and, you know, you're hardly working at all. Um, that's an easy trance to kind of fall into. So the next minute, we're going to go for another 40 seconds. And then on the next minute, it's total recovery. So uh, small chain ring, very little tension. Just keep the legs moving. But hopefully you're already starting to feel like if you had to, you could go back to that harder first minute. All right, when we go to the big, if you're in the big chain ring now, some of you are already in the small chain ring, but if you're in the big chain ring, switch three gears harder before switching the chain ring and it won't be such a shock. So go, so one, two, three on your right, small chain ring. And then that way it's not such a shock to your legs because when you switch that big chain ring right away, your legs just go like this and then you gotta adjust in the back. So almost always when you change chain rings, there's a micro adjustment in the back, but I like on most times to change the back first. Um, so it gets harder and then boom, it's easier, but it's a more natural, smooth change rather than that big jerky jump. And you know what I'm talking about when you switch your chain ring and your legs feel like they're gonna be ripped off. All right, time to towel off, get some water. All right, here we go in 15 seconds. So to figure out what gear you want to start in, remember first minute sets the tone. So it's either slightly uncomfortable or it's harder. Ready? Two, one, go. And if you're going harder, you can even stand up a bit. That'll really get some power into your pedal stroke.
All right, we're gonna make a gear change in five seconds. Okay, two, one, go. Throw an easier gear. So where you'll really notice this kind of cycling outside is when you're riding with people who are a little bit faster than you because it's gonna force you over small rises to go a little bit harder out of your comfort zone, keep up with them. But then if you just get in their draft or you're riding with them, you'll notice that you're still working hard over the next couple of minutes, but you can start to recover while you're still riding at that upper end of the aerobic zone. So as opposed to completely shutting it down and coasting and riding super easy, sometimes you just have to recover while you ride. It's also uh, something that you can and should do in racing. So a lot of times in racing, you might toggle this line that we're at right now. So we were above the line, now we're right at the line. And so if we can, the more we can be right at that line of our upper aerobic zone, the faster, further we can go without crossing it. When we cross too much too often, that's when we start to get really fatigued. And depending on the length of the race, it determines, okay, so gear change. Depending on the length of the race, determines how much you can cross that line. You know, like an Olympic distance race, maybe you're, if you uh, have a lot of cycling fitness, you can be above that line almost the whole way. If you don't have a lot of cycling fitness, you might want to be right at that line or cross a little bit, like on little hills. You cross the line, you come back. On a half Ironman, you know, you're probably straddling that line maybe the entire race. Or if you're not confident of, you know, really riding well because your fitness isn't super high, you want to be below that line. If you have a huge fitness base, you can be maybe right above that line. And then for Ironman, you want to be below that line. Uh, everybody does pretty much because it's so far. Maybe you have, in cycling, they call it burning matches. They say you don't want to burn too many matches too soon. But that means it's on a longer race. You only have so many times when you can you know, burn that match, you can flare up, raise up that energy. And if you do that too many times, you're out of gas. So they call it don't burn your matches too soon or don't burn too many matches. That means don't go so hard too much that you just destroy yourself because the ride is so long. So they talk about that like a lot of the, you know, tour races where the stages are 100 miles a day. It's like even those guys, as fast as they're going, they still have to conserve themselves a bit. And when they're attacking on mountains, you know, they only have so many attacks in their legs. And so they have to use those wisely. See you, Marion. You got two more minutes, but I'll say goodbye now. All right, we're going to go one more gear change to uh, ready, two, one. So easier gear. So now you should be down around that lower end of your aerobic zone. So hopefully you're keeping your cadence at 90 right now. If not, it's the time for you to bring it up. We're going to do a minute recovery in 15 seconds. All 
All right, five, four, three, two, one, recover. So again, switch your into your small chain ring. Anytime you switch big chain ring, small chain ring, if you don't have a smooth transition, then let that be a mental reminder that there's a better way to do that. Okay, so if it's abrupt change, that better way typically is going to come from making some adjustments in the rear derailleur first, and you want it to be simultaneously. It's not at the same time, because if you switch them at the same time, your chain will probably fall off, but it's like boom, 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 boom. Um, or if you're going to do the big one first, just know you're going to have to follow that up right away with the small, uh, with your rear derailleur. All right, we're going again in 15 seconds. That recovery minute goes by quick, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, think about the gear you want to be in. I'm going to get in the big chain ring. Going in five seconds. So remember, it's one minute, as hard as you want to go. Not all out. Here we go. So we bring that cadence up, start switching gears, keep the cadence up. You should definitely feel the resistance in the pedals. Use your form to recruit your glutes. Recruit your glutes. Should be a slogan. Five seconds to make it easier, gear change. Ready, go. All right, minute and a half, upper aerobic zone. Keep working, your breathing will come down. Change gears as needed. Marion might be gone, but uh, I think it's a great reminder. So often we look at a workout and we say, oh, I can't be there for the full 50 minutes, so I'm not going to do it. Or I got an hour run on my schedule and I don't have time, so I'm not going to do it. Instead, just change that workout to 20 minutes. Change it to 30 minutes. You know, make sure you have a nice 10 minute warm up and an easy five minute cool down. And then maybe you spend only five minutes in high intensity. If you go 30 minutes, maybe you spend 15 minutes with some intensity mixed in. But you're going to feel a lot better if you can get in that 20 or 30 minutes rather than just totally scrapping it. Okay, gear change easier. But that's one of the main things that I see and have experienced personally. And a lot of times it's just a mental shift because we think that, oh, I'm not doing the whole thing, so therefore I'm not going to do it. Or you tell yourself you'll do it later, but you don't. So if you have 20 minutes, make the most of 20 minutes. You'll feel so much better. And then you also get into that groove of consistency. One of the things that also happens is you skip a workout. The next day comes, you skip that workout. Before you know it, three weeks have gone by and you haven't worked out. You're like, what the hell? But if you were doing those 20 minute workouts, you'd have a pattern of working out and you're gonna feel better. And then, you know, before you know it, you're gonna be back up to the hour workout or whatever.
So if you have cadence on your bike and you notice it has dropped, make sure you get it back up to 90. And then even if that means you have to switch to an easier gear to do so. Or maybe it means you just have to concentrate a little more in the gear you're in. All right, 10 seconds to go, one more easier gear change. Four, three, two, go. So this is the lower end of your aerobic. It's also a place if you have higher fitness, you're gonna, it's gonna be more of a recovery zone, kind of like, you know, a little harder than pure recovery, but obviously easier than where we were. So you can ride here, you know, this is a place you can recover at without dropping all the way down. A lot of it depends on your fitness. If you're very new to cycling, very new to training, you know, this might be a place that feels toward, you know, you just, you don't have the fitness built up. And so this feels maybe harder than it does for other people. So I'm gonna stand up just to change up my muscle groups, stretch my back you don't have to we got 20 more seconds here but i'm still using an effort that's light i'm just standing to change things up all right here we go down to a minute recovery so make for a nice smooth gear change ready go so i'm gonna go three clicks to my rear derailleur and i'm gonna go to my small chain ring and it's Nice and smooth. All right, recovery. So just keep your legs spinning. You choose your rate, you choose your gear. There should be very little tension in your pedal stroke. Back still a little sore. I wanna stand up, but my, my back's not quite there yet. So anyway, get some hydration. We got one last set. All right, so you've been through it before. You know where you wanna take that first minute. I'm gonna get into the big chain ring. We're going in five seconds. Ready, go. So first minute, hard as you wanna go. All right, gear change, easier. Get your cadence up to 90, even if that means you have to go in easier gear.
right, coming up on a gear change. Three, two, one, go easier gear. Two minutes here. All right, we're coming up on one more easy gear change. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Here for a minute and a half. Keep your cadence above 90. Where am I at? 85. So this is where, you know, with a mental lapse, you can let that cadence drop. It's just super easy to do. What happened to me? So just a tiny bit of intention and effort, bring it back up to 90. And if you can't get it to 90, it means go to an easier gear change. Trying to read the comment. Feeling means after we get ah yes, excellent point. So, if any of you had a big weekend, then on Mondays you have permission, not that you need it, but <laughs> or it should be advised that you may need to adjust the intensity downward. So gear change easier. So small chain ring with a minute recovery. So here's what happens. Maybe you went on a big ride. Maybe you went hiking and your quads or the downhill just beat you up, right? <laughs> Screaming quads, yeah. But if you went on a big hike, especially the downhill, it's uh, eccentric loading on your quads. Eccentric is basically your muscles elongating uh, while they're under contraction. And uh, you know it like when you're hiking down a big hill and you get down your quads are all rubbery. Right. Um, so what that means is on Mondays, you may need to change the intensity. Like you could totally make this a recovery workout, um, which after a big day of hiking or like it was uh, three weeks back, I did a monster ride on Sunday and I was wiped out for Monday. And so to do it as a recovery ride, you could do the same thing that we did. But instead of going on that first minute, even uncomfortable, you keep it slightly uncomfortable and you increase the cadence. So the more we can get the blood flowing under moderate to low pedal tension, the more we'll increase blood flow, the more we'll increase recovery. And so 
you can still go through these gear changes and make it a recovery ride. Another thing could be that instead of doing four, uh, you do two sets, right? And two are recovery and two are work. So this is a great um, topic and a great segue, Mintha. Thank you. It's just uh, it's just impossible, right, to know where everybody's at. And you might not even know. Like you might have – Sunday was a beautiful day in Seattle and you didn't have any plan. Your friend said, let's go hiking. You're like, yeah, great. Let's go hiking. So it wasn't in your plan but it's what happened or maybe you're going to go on a Saturday and that weather day is bad. So you switch it to a Sunday and that, you know, it affects everything down the line. And this is a big part of having it. Like when you have a training plan, having the awareness and the uh, permission to alter your workouts, depending on how your body feels. Cause some people, this is what people get in trouble. They don't make that alteration. They, 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 they say Sunday, they're just wiped out. And then they have this hard workout on Monday and a medium hard workout on Tuesday. And in their brain, like, I got to do it. And so they muscle through it. They're even more fatigued. They go into the next day, more fatigued, more fatigued. By the time Friday comes, they're wiped out. And then they skip their weekend workouts because their weekend workouts are really the main workouts, the key workouts. Or they just keep going until they get to a point where they're just completely wiped out and maybe they get injured. Um, I have a friend who pushed herself for many years. Uh, she got adrenal fatigue syndrome, which is a really deep level of fatigue. And it, it can take like, literally can take like two to three years to come back from adrenal fatigue syndrome. Um, but some people have that ability to push themselves so hard that you know they just ignore all the signs and they end up with stress fractures and you know they're running on shins that their shins are sore and they keep running for five weeks and then they break a bone you know and then they're out for eight weeks right and so it would be better like for today you're coming into this tired make today a recovery workout maybe you need to make tomorrow a recovery workout but you're back at it on wednesday you miss two days of training or you have two days of light training and you're back at it versus putting yourself into this position where you miss two weeks of training or eight weeks of training because you get injured. And sometimes it's just experience. When you miss eight weeks, you go, man, maybe I should have taken a day off. And then after a while, when you start to like, you're like, I'm really fatigued. I'm going to take one day off, two days off. Even if you take three days off and you're right back at it, you're right back to where you were. Um, a couple of good workouts and you're like, uh, it's like I didn't even miss anything. So, uh, you know, when I always say when, when missing a day of workout, when that's the exception and not the rule, you're fine. If you're, you know, if every once in a while you take a day off when you had a planned workout, it's not a big deal at all. But if that happens, let's say you're just unmotivated, you're doing a training program and you find yourself skipping half the workouts all the time. Well, that's no longer the exception. That actually becomes the rule. And now your training isn't what it is because your rule has been missing workouts. And so that's different than when the rule is you're hitting 80% of your workouts and you're missing ones here or there. That becomes the exception. You're totally fine. Um, so unfortunately for some of us, I've had to learn the hard way too, is you, you know, it just requires getting injured which we don't want, but sometimes that happens. So anyway, enough of my sermon. Uh, 30 more seconds, and then we're done. And then hopefully I'll see you on Thursday. And we'll get after it. I'll read that comment when I get off. All right, 10 seconds. Whew. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully you have a great day. I think it's supposed to be sunny again today and then cloudy tomorrow in Seattle and we're done 50 minutes boom all right have a great day